would like to start today's practice by thanking all our awesome subscribers for supporting us so much. Believe me, this means a lot to us. Thanks for all the love that you people have shown to us. So let us start with today's reading practice video. As you know, this entire week we practiced a lot of reading part C, so in today's video we will try discussing some part B questions. Here is your first question. Doctors are advised to break patient confidentiality if patient confidentiality, confidentiality is central to trust between doctors and patients. Without assurances about confidentiality, patients may be reluctant to seek medical attention or to give doctors the information they need in order to provide good care. However, faced with a situation in which a patient's refusal to consent to disclosure leaves others exposed to a risk so serious that it outweighs the patient's and the public interest in maintaining confidentiality, or if it is not practical or safe to seek the patient's consent, information should be disclosed promptly to an appropriate person or authority. The patient should be informed in advance that the doctor will be disclosing the information, provided this is practical and safe, even if the doctor intends to disclose without the patient's consent. The correct answer for this question is, failure to do so would put other people in danger. Let's read the highlighted section of the paragraph together. However, faced with a situation in which a patient's refusal to consent to disclosure leaves others exposed to a risk so serious that it outweighs the patient's and the public interest in maintaining confidentiality, or if it is not practical or safe to seek the patient's consent, information should be disclosed. This tells that doctors can disclose information if others are exposed to risk more than the interest in maintaining confidentiality. According to the guidance notes, all staff involved in transferring patients from critical to general care must. Transfer of patients. The critical care area transferring team and the receiving ward team should take shared responsibility for the care of the patient being transferred. They should jointly ensure that there is continuity of care through a formal structured handover from critical care area staff to ward staff, including both medical and nursing staff, supported by a written plan. The receiving ward, with support from critical care if required, can deliver the agreed plan. When patients are transferred to the general ward from a critical care area, they should be offered information about their condition and encouraged to actively participate in decisions that relate to their recovery. The information should be tailored to individual circumstances. If they agree, their family and carers should be involved.
The correct answer for this question is C. Make arrangements for ongoing cooperation once the transfer is complete. The points that are highlighted implies that ongoing cooperation is important even after the transfer. The memo says, failure to screen a patient for malnutrition may result in. This is to remind staff of the importance of nutrition screening to identify problems which may go unrecognized and therefore remain untreated during the patient's hospital stay. Nutrition screening should occur on admission and then weekly during the patient's episode of care, at least monthly in slower stream facilities, or if the patient's clinical condition changes, all patients should have their weight and height documented on admission and weight should continue to be recorded at least weekly. Patients whose score is at risk on a validated screening tool or whose clinical condition is such that their treating team identifies them as at risk of malnutrition should be referred to a dietitian for a full nutrition assessment and nutrition support as appropriate. The correct option for this question is C, care providers being unaware of an issue. The highlighted section of the paragraph has the key words that will lead you to the answers. This is to remind staff of the importance of nutrition screening to identify problems which may go unrecognized and therefore remain untreated during the patient's hospital stay. If you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel. Please feel free to comment the number of correct answers that you got. We will bring the second part of this video tomorrow. Your support keeps us motivated to bring more such videos for you. Thank you.